Hey guys, so I am here today with the man, the myth, and I don't know, maybe legend. We'll see. Uh, Chris Ducker, who's got a new book coming out that I'm I'm excited about because it's something that I'm passionate about with uh, with you guys. It's called Rise of the Youpreneur. Rise of the Youpreneur. Before we get into anything, I want to make sure you have the URL. It is youpreneur.com forward slash book. So that is you, Y-O-U, P-R-E-N-E-U-R dot com forward slash book. And if you can't spell book, well, you don't need to be reading it. So uh, I'm not going to spell that one for you, but Chris, uh, welcome, man. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just lost like eight people on that. I can't spell book. That's why I listen to podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Fair comment. <laughs> Yes. So I'm going to start with the question everyone's probably asking themselves right now. Um, what the heck is a youpreneur, dude? <laughs> well, a youpreneur, very, very simply put, is somebody that builds a business based around them, but not reliant on them. Hmm. So it's people like coaches, consultants, authors, speakers, content creators, you know, YouTubers, live streamers, bloggers, podcasters, anybody really building a business based around their expertise, their personality, and the people that they want to serve. That's what a youpreneur is. So why, why are we rising? Like, I mean, I, I would consider myself a youpreneur based on that definition. I know you would consider yourself one. Um, what, what, what's the reason for the rise uh, of us, I guess? Well, because we're, we're done. You know, we're done allowing other people, other things, other situations to ultimately get in our way of success. That's what it comes down to for me anyway. Uh, you know, as a Brit, obviously I'm, and, and as a Brit that's about to move back to the UK after 17 years uh -oh. of being out of it, um, I'm looking very closely at the whole Brexit situation of the UK leaving the EU. Uh, as we know, in the United States, there's been a lot of, you know, change and a lot of, uh, splitting of the country and from a political perspective with the president and all that kind of type of thing. And I think that these changes, although are very big on the grand scheme of the world, they should not be big in the grand scheme of the health of our businesses. And so I want to become future-proof. I can do that by becoming the go-to leader in my industry, by creating great info products, by being a well highly sought after keynote speaker within my industry or my market, by writing great books, by coaching amazing people, by ultimately becoming somebody's favorite. I mean, that's what we want to do yeah. anyway, is we want to be people's favorite. We want to be people's favorite podcast, a blogger, whatever the case may be. And so for me, it's about becoming future-proof. At the very definition of what being a youpreneur is all about, it's about being future-proof. Yeah, you, you mentioned something there like the I recorded a video, I think it was in like late October of 2016. And I just, you know, the gist of it was um if you like it was in the height of like all this passion about the presidential election. And I appreciate it on some level, but at the other thing, on the other end, it's like people are saying, like half the country is saying if this person gets elected, then it's the end of the world as we know it. The other half is saying if this person gets elected, it's the end of the world as we know it. And I'm thinking, this is like our four, what our forty fifth or forty sixth president, <laughs> and at no point during any of the previous ones, like we've had some strange things. You know, we've had some interesting people, some perhaps unqualified people in the White House, and at no point did we have Armageddon. You know, and if you look at it, it's like you look at the stock market. The stock right. market's done great right. under Republicans. The stock market's done great under Democrats. Maybe what that means is it doesn't matter all that much who's in the White House or who's the prime minister, or who's the head of the United Nations, maybe it actually is like you and you and me, you know, maybe well, that's... Look, at, look at, at the end of the day, if you're a good person, and you do the right things for the right reasons, and you love your family, and you love your friends, and you open the door for people when you're walking into the coffee shop, and you make sure you don't spit your gum out on the street, and you do all these things <laughs> that makes you a nice human being, if you do that, how bad of a place the, can the world be? Yeah. Like, that's all we need to do is look after ourselves. If we can do that, then 
you know, everything else is, it's not necessarily irrelevant, but it's not as big of a big deal. I mean, I remember my, my old man, my dad, as we, we call our fathers, the old man in the UK. So my <laughs> old man used to say to me, you know, there are only three things in life that you can be 100% sure on. Number one is death. Number two is taxes. And number three is change. Mm-hmm. You can bet your butt on all those three things. Everything else is, you know, it's it's out, it's <laughs> it's open season. You can do you can do what you want, kind of thing. But those three things will come your way. But if we can do anything to pick up that more long term view of building our businesses, working with the right people, creating great things to sell products, services, experiences, whatever it is, if we have that in our very core, um, then only good things can happen, obviously. Yeah. So you mentioned this idea of future proofing, which I love. Um, it's, uh, there's, a, there's an exercise I've, I've done since I think 2007, which is every year I sit down and think of what are the, what are the 10 things that could just like take down my business this year? And you know, it seems like every year, none of them are external. They're all internal. Duh. The reason for that, <laughs> unless you work with like government contractors, you know, then you could have external things. But um, what are some ways we can future proof our businesses as youpreneurs? Well, first and foremost, you've got to be yourself all the time, and I think this is a this is always a big thing. It, particularly, you know, a lot of people come to me and they say, oh, "Well, I don't want to be front and center of my business." You know, if that's what being a youpreneur is, I don't want to be front and center. And my reaction to that is, look, if you are dead set against it, this ain't the model for you. Mm. Go figure something else out. But if you're just saying, well, I don't know whether I'm really, am I really that kind of person? I'm not sure if I want to do podcasting or if I want to be on video and this kind of thing. If you're 50-50 on it, then my reaction will be to, well, then try it and see what happens. I, I threw more of me into my businesses around 2010, 2011, as I was recovering from burnout, because I was running big corporate businesses that I still own and operate now, but I have nothing to do with the day-to-day businesses in terms of the way that they're run anymore. And so I was bored with it. I was bored to my back teeth with it, quite frankly. And I didn't want to, to deal with it anymore. I didn't want to have to deal with B2B clients anymore. So I decided to go ahead and, and really focus in on doubling down on my own personal brand, coaching, consulting, live events, product services, that kind of thing. Everything focused around me and what I can do for other people. And what do you think happened? The businesses that I was no longer involved with, that I got someone involved with to help me run, mm-hmm. obviously went up. Revenues went up employee counts go up. I get the chance to spend more time doing the stuff that I enjoy. It goes from five figures to six figures and beyond. So obviously I'm doing something right. Why? Because I'm being me all the time. What you see is what you get. If you don't like what you're getting, go get it something else. It's okay. You know, my biggest thing, and you've probably seen me on Twitter. I know we, we tweet back and forth every now and then. You've seen me. I'm sure you must have seen me say this on Twitter. You market like a magnet you attract the best and repel the rest and that's what that's how i live every day i market like a magnet i don't want to attract the people that are going to buy my 500 hundred dollar product and want a refund on day 29 of the 30-day refund period yeah they're not my kind of people you attract the best for you exactly that's that's totally, I mean, that's who you want to attract. You want to attract the people who don't mind the fact that you mispronounce the word literally, you know? Uh, <laughs> you know? Let's not go down this rabbit hole, all right? It's, <laughs> it's chamomile as well. I just want to say it's chamomile. Chamomile it's tea? Aluminium. It's definitely aluminium, yeah. okay? <laughs> like, no, I mean, in all seriousness, they, you know, I have, uh, you know, if you, if like in our course, you know, if if you can't deal with the fact that occasionally I will go on a tangent and talk about something that just popped into my head, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being focused either. It's just no. that I attract a person who doesn't mind that I will make a joke that, um, you know, that doesn't mind watching a video of, of Mark and me just go off on some weird tangent for five minutes. And, you know, like if you can't do that and that's okay, because some percentage of the population can't, then 
like, don't, I always tell you, like, don't give me money. Don't even subscribe to my list. Just, you can get this information somewhere. I don't know where, but you can find it if you look hard enough, just not through me because I'm not your style. Yeah. The same thing for you. You want to attract the people that are best for you. And that's, that's you're clearly what you're doing. You know, I, I see that every day. Like you, you attract you've drawn track. a line in the sand. Yeah. And without a doubt. That. Um, and it, was, it was a big game changer. Once I did that, it was a huge game changer because it opened yeah. up so many different doors of opportunities for me. Not trying to be everything to everyone. I mean, that's no. what it comes down to. You answered my next. I, one of the questions I wanted to ask was like, is everyone meant to be a youpreneur or even an entrepreneur? And, and I think you, I think you clearly answered that. Um, and you touched on another question, which was, so you have somebody who is already an entrepreneur. They're a business owner. Um, and they're having these, these doubts about, you know, okay, what about the, but this you printer thing? Like that's, that's kind of next level. That's different level. Um, if they are, if go and go talk a little bit more, you know, they're 50, 50, what are some of the steps they can take? They have some doubts about whether or not they're into this you printer idea. What are their like first few steps to maybe test the waters and say, I do want to do this or I don't want to do this. Well, look, we're, we're in a position in history now where we can test our ideas and get validation pretty darn quickly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, I remember back in 2015, four or five months before I opened the doors to the Upana community, um, I was testing headlines, email subject titles, uh, CTAs. I was testing all these things live on Periscope for months prior to the to the landing page and the emails going out and all the rest of it. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can test your ideas. But honestly, for me, content creation is what it's all about. I mean, if you think about it from a logical perspective in 2018 and beyond, content marketing is the only real kind of marketing that's left, mm. quite frankly. It's the only real kind of marketing that's left. So create content, market it. Put it in front of the people that you ultimately want to do business with. Understand that some people that, that watch that video or download that podcast or read that blog post are going to think that it's completely crap. Yeah. And that's fine. Move on from it because for the two or three people out of the 100 that think it's a load of rubbish, the other 97 or so people are going to enjoy it and they're going to consume it. And more importantly, they're going to share it and you get yeah. a viral effect and the feedback will come your way. But the most important thing is when that feedback does come your way and your audience starts to listen to you genuinely and starts giving you back information, you need to shut the hell up and pay attention to what they're saying <laughs> because they will be the ones that ultimately dictate what your business becomes going forward. Oh, All right. Let me say that, that again. Yeah. Your, your audience will be the ones that dictate how your business grows in the future based on their own very, very selfish needs. And if you are the entrepreneur that you should be and that problem solver that you should be, you will pivot with them. You will flow just like a beautiful bamboo tree and you will just flow into one direction to another and get to the point of solving one problem after another, after another. And if you do it well enough, you're blessed to put a price tag on that solution. Yeah. I love that. You just made me think of, uh, you know, that whole, that whole like idea of, you know, a hundred people reading it and one or two people complained about it. The reality is you probably changed the lives of 10 times more people. Um, so just remember that, like, you, yeah, you know, you, you, totally. you, you transform 20 people's business and two people didn't like it. I mean, really? What the heck? It's like, I don't know if you ever saw this, but Jeff Walker, we were just talking about this, uh, my wife and I, Jeff Walker did a video. Some guy posted a comment on his blog about two years ago and it said, Jeff, I can't take you seriously with the t-shirts that you wear. You, know, you and I both know like Jeff's always in like, he's not fancy. We'll just put that way. Right. That's just, and that's his style. You know, he lives in the mountains. He's not a fancy of, guy. He's not you a know? fancy guy. And, and he's, he's, he's wearing this, and he, in this particular video, he had a particularly kind of worn down t-shirt that he had probably owned since the eighties. And this guy was like, I can't take you seriously. So Jeff shot this video it was in black and white and I'll link, I'll link to it below this. And it's, do you remember the one I'm talking about? And he's, I remember he's, it. He's I wearing a suit, well. you know, like a, like a, something you would wear to a wedding. And he just goes to Joe, I apologize. 
I'm very sorry for offending you. And then it cuts away and he's in his boxers. <laughs> you know, it's great. And, he, like, and then he just goes to him in a t-shirt. He's like, listen, you don't want, like, I don't want that guy as a client. You know, that's it. So I love Look, that. There's, there's, like that. Just be you. It goes back to the same thing. Just be you all the time. Look at Sir Richard Branson. All right. The guy's in a t-shirt and a pair of board shorts most, most days during the week. He's on NECA. I mean, he basically lives there full time now. I mean, he's not there and he's walking around doing business. He's in jeans and a, and a, and just a button down shirt and a leather jacket. The guy detests ties. He cuts them up mm-hmm. quite sporadically, no matter where he goes, he cuts ties. And I mean, you know, I, I think that there's a lot to be said for the tie cutting hot air balloon riding Richard Branson. Uh, when, when you see him doing what he does, that's him being so Richard and you have to respect that. Um, you know, when you see someone like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who, you know, has grown a ridiculously huge following uh, utilizing the power of social media, I mean, he's the personal brand, you know, celebrity personified nowadays, right, with his Instagram posts and everything. One minute, he will make you cry. He's made me cry on a number of occasions where he's been with kids that are sick or they just want to meet their hero or this and the other. And the next minute he's dropping F bombs and like beating up Kevin Hart and he's just making you laugh like crazy. Like his vibe attracts his tribe and that's what his people like. Mm -hmm. That's what his people like. And so for me as a youpreneur myself at the very core, what you see is what you get. I'm a proud Brit. I'm a no BS kind of guy. You, you, you know, you really know where you stand with me. I'm a big lover of scotch and bourbon. I'm also a Star Wars geek, and I love playing with Lego with my kids. Yes. So those are the five things. <laughs> all the time, you just, you'll just you see me talking about those things all the time. And people, I've had people gift me things with Union Jacks on them. I've had bottles of bourbon given to me at conferences. Lego sets have been sent to me in the mail for me and my kids to make together. I love all that stuff. See, I'm becoming somebody's favorite based on who I am and what I do. And I don't care what other people think. And I think everybody has the right and should act like that as well. I love that idea of being somebody's favorite. That's, that's such a cool thing. Um, so I know two things about you, Chris. Number one, you take off uh, at least almost every Friday, hashtag no work Fridays. Yes. And I, I, I think I've shared this with you personally, but that actually inspired our company. We regularly schedule no work Mondays. Uh, Monday just works better for us. Friday tends to be a, a day we find hard to take off, but it gives us that three day weekend. But number two, I know that you are ambitious. So for the ambitious among us, you and I included here, uh, how can a youpreneur build a business like yours? You know, we're talking six, seven figures without working 24 seven and completely burning out, which oh, I knew you you've it. been there. So yeah, you do it. I have, I've, I've, I've did a horrible uh, or experienced a horrible burnout in late 2009 where I was in the hospital and on fluids and antidepressants and all the rest of it. Um, you know, you build any kind of business, but particularly a personal brand type business. The goal is to build a business based around you and what you stand for, but not reliant mm. on you. So, you know, it comes down to delegation. It, it comes down to building your team of people around you that can genuinely, you know, uh, help you out in, in what you do. My goal, you know, in, at the beginning of the book, actually, Rise of the Upen, at the beginning of the book, we actually do an exercise together, myself and the reader. And I talk them through what we call the Upener self-awareness test. And anybody can do this test. Anyone can do it right now, actually. Get a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle. On one side of that line, on that left-hand side column, you write down what I call the flatter yourself list. Uh, that list is generally not a tough list for entrepreneurs to put together. They're quite they're quite happy to talk about how fantastic they are. Every we can just right? let's do that now. Let me just say how good I am. Um, no, I'm just <laughs> You know what I mean? You see what I mean? It, it's so easy. It's so simple. But then the other side is the keep it real list. Mm. And that's all the things that you struggle with, the things that maybe you're not so great at. And it's tough for a lot of type A type in, you know, entrepreneurs to come up with that list. And actually, it doesn't really matter all that much if there's two or three things on that side of the column or that side of the line, or not. What really matters is that you focus on what you're great at. You do more of that and less of the crap, right? So everything else that you're not so fantastic, uh, 
you know, focused on, you just delegate it out. You build the team to help you build that out. Or you completely eradicate it, if you can, from your business model. And you just focus on what you're good at. So what, I'm, what I believe I should be doing, what I believe I should be doing is creating content, helping to market that content, to spread the message of the Upano movement in a, in a wider sense through speaking and doing guest posts and, you know, the opportunity to get on great podcasts like this. Like, that's what I should be doing is the face of Youpreneur. Yeah. Everything else in terms of the running of our online community, the creating of and, and you know, the, the, uh, the launching of our, of our first big live event last year. We, we had the inaugural Youpreneur Summit in London last November. It sold out three months prior to the event taking place. It was a huge, huge, huge success. Mm. And, you know, honestly, when we did a pre-registration on the Friday night prior to the event, I was kind of standing around. Everybody was getting their badges and their, you know, swag bags and all the rest of it. And several people came up to me and they said, you look way too calm. Like for a guy that's just about to like kind of have one of his dreams come true and hold a big event like this in his hometown, you look way too chilled out, way too calm. That Why? And my honest reaction was, kind of haven't got a job right now. <laughs> like I'm, I, I'm kind of not, like, I'm just not really supposed to be doing anything. As you see, the team is here taking care of it all. My job was to host the event. Yeah, It was to introduce our great speakers and, and do all that stuff. The, the AV team did the AV stuff. The, the, you know, registration team did the registration stuff. And so... I guess really my superpower is being acutely aware of what I should be doing and what I should get other people to do for me. I love that. You're the queen of England. You, your job is to stand there and wave and then introduce the people who are doing all the work. Yeah. And, and, and ev- yeah. And everyone else can chase after the horses and the corgis and yeah. you know, all that stuff. I yeah. don't know what a corgi is. So um <laughs> Yeah. It's the little dogs, the little dogs that follow Her Majesty around everywhere. Oh, really? Oh. Do we have those over here? I wonder. I, I got to look that up now. Um, I don't know. I'm dogs. sure you've got corgis in America. I'm pretty they, sure. Yeah, you know, they somehow made it over, you know, with, <laughs> in the last 300 years. They somehow yeah, made yeah. it over, I'm sure. I think they, we've got <laughs> dogs overseas now. Yeah, that's uh, right. They, they boarded a boat or something. They, they hijacked a boat or something. Boat yeah. full of corgis. It's a, I'm going to make that into a cartoon. And how the corgis got to America. Um, anyway, so you mentioned the Youpreneur Summit. I do want to talk about that real quick. Um, mm. Like, I mean, that's that's what you're known for. I mean, I, I, I personally got to start knowing you, I guess, through uh, your work with Pat Flynn, with the, the one-day business breakthroughs, uh, I believe they were called. Um, mm-hmm. The all the stuff you've done with all the live events you've done. So like, just, I know the answer to this, but share with our, like from your opinion, what's the importance of getting together in person? Um, you know, as I mean, we're so digital now we can do anything. Like I can reach anybody anywhere in the world in 2.7 seconds by sending a signal to space and back. But like, what's the importance of, of getting together in person? It's everything. It's, it's everything, you know, relationships should be treasured, not used. Mm. And I'm a big, big believer of that. Um, and I think particularly in the online business world, there's way too many people trying to use each other. Mm. They're trying to get at each other for their email lists. They're trying to get at each other for the retweet or the Facebook Live that they can potentially do it in front of their audience and all that kind of stuff. And understand people's, uh, uh, people's BS antennas are way too sensitive nowadays or anybody that's really worth their weight has a sensitive antenna when it comes to that stuff. I certainly do. Uh, And I call BS on something miles away. Uh, And I I just, I really truly do believe that magic, magic actually happens when you bring people together in person. And you mentioned, I mean, the the perfect example is me and Pat. We knew each other for about a year or so um, throughout the course of what, it would have been late 2008 through to late 2009, where we met online predominantly. Um, I can't even remember how that happened. I think I might have commented on his blog or something. I can't remember now. But we started tweeting, and then we started emailing, and then we found out that we had the Philippines in in oh uh, yeah, you know in what's the word I'm looking for in common, in common. Um, with me obviously being over here in Cebu. His mum 
was actually born in Cebu, about a two hour drive away from where I am right now. And we just, it, it just, it, it became more and more and more apparent that we had a lot in common with each other, but we had never met. And then in 2010, we had the opportunity to meet up at Blog World, which was the event uh, that, you know, uh, was running for several years. Yeah. And, and so we met there. We had some nachos. And, uh, <laughs> and ever since, we've been best buddies. I mean, you know, we, are, we, we actually refer to each of our families as our second families. And so, you know, I've seen his children grow up from tiny little, tiny, tiny little babies. Um, and he's obviously seen uh, Charlie and now Cassandra, who uh, joined us in October last year. He's actually Cassandra's godfather. Oh, and wow. so, you know, this is the power of relationships, man. This is serious yeah stuff and this is why we put on the one day bb events and this is why i i held tropical think tank here in the philippines for so long uh and i mean really you know with the upcoming move to the uk and me wanting to make more of a splash in a live event scenario um i knew i needed to put on a big event in the uk and i also knew that i wanted to hit the ground running when i got there i didn't want to have to um kind of start from scratch so to speak, and which is why we held it for the first time last year. The move is taking place this year, and we're doing it again, obviously, this year as well. And it was a massive awesome. success. Very, very, very proud of it. Very proud. I love that. I mean, Mark, uh, Mark Sievercrop, who you've met at the breakfast, you know, we work together now. I mean, we, we connected initially from commenting on the same blog. There you, you know? go. But yeah. it's, I mean, the first, like when we started meeting in person, uh, and, and, you know, in-person is, is awesome, but even if it's as simple as, you know, at least to start with, cause sometimes that's not practical for at least a period of time, uh, making sure you're getting on video and, sure. and spending quality time, not just like, you know, we're Twitter friends, like that doesn't count. You know I mean? Like you're not gonna, you're not gonna lay on your deathbed. Like we're calling your Twitter relationships. That's just not the way it's going to go. You're going to recall the, <laughs> you're going to recall your relationship with Pat you know right and that would not have there, happened there are many many other people in our online business world that i've now classed myself as, uh, you know or, or, or class our relationships as very very close meaningful caring loving relationships that i wouldn't have had if i hadn't have been active in the online space you know mm -hmm. notable mentions to lewis howes um jay beer carrie wilkerson you know, uh, Rory Vaden, Dan Miller, yeah. Michael Hyatt, you know, all these people that I now class as close friends, like genuinely close friends. Um, I wouldn't have met if I hadn't started blogging and podcasting. So we live in this time in, in history, which is, is there's more opportunities, there's more chances and, you know, there's, there's, there's more, uh, you know, that there's the ability to be able to connect with people, like you said, is 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 more powerful than ever before. But here's the thing. We've never been as connected as we are, but we've never been as disconnected as mm -hmm. we are right now as well. And that's the tough part about it. And that's why for me, relationships should be treasured, not used. And I'm quoted to be saying that all the time and I genuinely, genuinely mean it. Well, I love that, Chris. Last question here, bud. I want to respect your time and let you go. Um, you know, your last book was traditionally published. Um, this one was self-published. And I know that in some people's mindsets, and I actually want you to address this, they think that's a step backwards. So why did you why did you self-publish this one? Well, for the first part, I will say that I had three offers on this book from publishers. So I could have traditionally published it without any problems. Um, the reason, I mean, there was a number of reasons why I decided to self or independently publish it. And that is number one, I wanted it into the world quickly. I didn't want to have to sort of sit on the manuscript yeah. for an entire year before it eventually comes out, right? Um, number two was I made several mistakes as a first time author with virtual freedom, where I signed the rights of the audio book over, I signed the rights of the international distribution over. Mm. And by the time I got, I got the international rights back, 
it was too late. The title was too old for me to really do anything with it, mm -hmm. um, which is a shame because Virtual Freedom is a book that should be in more than just three languages. It's currently in English, Chinese, and Japanese. It should be in a lot more than that. Um, and, and this time around, I wanted complete and utter control of the entire process. I'm not a micromanager anymore. I was, but I'm not anymore. But with this particular book, I wanted to know that I had control of the book. I wasn't even going to be on the cover of it up until maybe about a month before we were due to go to print. We oh, had wow. a beautiful graphic cover design and I was like, that's going to be great. But then I spoke with two or three of the people that I just mentioned a minute ago and all of them turned around and said, dude, you've got to be on the cover. Like, <laughs> you, have to be. Like you are the Youpreneur guy. You've got yeah, to be on the cover. ironic actually. So honestly, that we, we, we shot the photo that sits on the cover of that book in like 30 minutes in my office in the Philippines here. I use the local photographer. He comes in with one guy with one light into my office on a Saturday morning and we just shot it very, very quickly and it turned out great and everything. But the fact is that um, I want to complete control of the entire thing, plain and simple. And when you self-publish it, you have it. Now, equally though, I was also aware of the fact that I've seen a lot of self-published books and for the most part, they look self-published. They look, yeah, that's... <laughs> right? This does not look self-published at all. <laughs> no, and so I, I, I invested heavily, heavily, heavily into making sure that this book looks and feels like a traditionally published book. And I put it to the test. I put it to the test because I sent my good friend, Michael Hyatt. I thought that's who you were going to say. <laughs> Several months ago, I sent him a copy of the book. And he got back to me and he said to me, there's absolutely no way that I would have believed this was a self-published book when I picked it up. The quality of the typefacing, the quality of the print, the design, the layout, the pull quotes, everything you've done, the images, everything, it just doesn't look like a traditionally published book. In fact, I think his exact words were, were it begs you to pick it up and read it or something along those lines. Mm. Now, when you've got a guy that was in the publishing world for over yeah. two decades saying that to you, then that's obviously to be taken as a big compliment. So we're very, very proud of it, man. Very that's proud awesome. of it. That is awesome. So again, guys, you can find the book. Uh, if you're listening to this, uh, like assuming you're listening to this after it goes live, uh, <laughs> well, um, unless uh, you've got some secret live man. streaming uh, thing going on right now that I'm unaware of. <laughs> Mom, why are you on? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Youpreneur.com. Again, Y-O-U-P-R-E-N-E-U-R.com forward slash book. And if you order fast enough, and Chris, I don't know if there's a deadline you can give, but if you order fast enough, there's actually some awesome uh, bonuses that you're including, I mean, I mean, just so cool. I don't know if you want to tell us what the if, if there is a deadline because I didn't pay. Yeah, for so we have a couple of packages available: uh, a personal package and then a group package. Because there's a lot of people in my community that are, you know, they're community leaders themselves. So they might have a, a large podcast following or mastermind group or whatever. So I know they're likely to buy one copy for everybody within that group or whatever. So there's a personal package, a group package. Um, and, uh, I mean, you can get up to $700 worth of bonuses deciding on which one you go for that's up until and including March six. So if you buy either one copy, you know, up to, you know, a thousand, whatever, um, you can get those bonuses up to March six after March six, there will still be a bonus package available, but it won't be much to be honest okay. with you. So this is just for the launch, just to celebrate the launch of the book itself. And there's a little note at the back of the book on this as well. But I will say that if you go ahead and review the book on Amazon as well, make sure you send us a copy of that review. Uh, and like I said, the address is at the back of the book because we've actually designed and put together a beautifully professionally designed companion workbook that we'll send nice. you for free as a thank you for reviewing the book that will uh, enable you to kind of print it out, work through it. It's very, very cool. Well, I want to. I want to add one more thing because this just popped in my head when you mentioned the bulk order. So here's the thing: um, I want you 
guys to go out and th- this is a great book to give away to family members, uh, people that you know. I know there's there's a book uh, Susie Moore wrote it called uh, What If I think it's called What If It Work What If It Does Work Out and it's about creating a side hustle. And I'm like, immediately I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is for this person, this person, this person, like all these people I know who are like, well, I could never start a business or what if it doesn't work out, you know? And so this is another one of those books, guys, that like, you you know, 20 people who need this book. So uh, like I said, this popped in my head. So this is not really fleshed out. Um, if you get 20 of Chris's books and you send me the receipt, so send it to uh, receipts. But receipts has a P. I don't know why, but receipts has a P. Uh, Blame receipt. it on the British. It's bound to go. It's, it's got to have something to do with us. Got to have something. I know. We, <laughs> that's one, that should have been one of the conditions of the Treaty of Paris. Um, we get to eliminate the P in receipt after we. Anyway, um, <laughs> one of our clients, Nick Stevenson, is is lives there in London, and I just give right. him crap anytime. Anytime I, he he tries to talk about Britain, I just say 1776. That's all I got to say, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal receipts at matt if you will email your receipt for 20 books or more i'm going to do a one hour consult with you to help you set up your affiliate program uh nice. this is a big part of being a youpreneur i believe for sure is is having oh, tons dude, of other people marketing is you. right there in the monetization section of the yeah. book so which we relevant. didn't even talk about because of time so that's the deal um Get 20 or more, hand them out, or just buy, quite frankly, this would be what you're going to spend on 20 of these is going to be about a tenth as much as you would pay me directly. So uh, buy 20 and keep 19 of them just sitting in your garage. I don't care. Uh, But I would like you to give, I do care. Actually, I want you to give them out. Uh, Buy 20. I'd I'd like people to read them as well. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Can I just throw that in? (laughs) Um, I just want to have like hundreds of copies of Rise of the Upanera in garages all over the world. (laughs) It's going to be great. Uh, uh, to translate, that's garages, by the way. I'm uh, sorry, garage, garage. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, get 20 copies, receipts at mammoclinics.com, and we'll set up a one-hour consult to help you. Uh, if it's get your affiliate program off the ground, you can ask me anything, do whatever. That's uh, especially for this. And that also, we'll just say, is by March 6th as well. So don't email me on March 7th and expect to get that. Uh, you can still buy 20 copies. Just you're not getting that bonus. So Chris, thank you so much, buddy. Um, and very kind of you. I did, I did not know that you were going to offer that as a bonus. I did not know I was going to offer that either. <laughs> it's all, it's not, all the, sh- it's the shirt, isn't it? It's the shirt. It's the shirt. But no, I'm, I'm thinking like, shirt. I'm thinking, you know what? I, I, I want to get this book in more people's hands. And that's like buying one book is great. If you buy one for yourself, guys, that's great. Um, but buying a book and, and sharing it with your loved ones, your friends, just those people that you go, I know they need this book. And we all know people who need this book. Uh, I mean, I can think of half a dozen people without even thinking. I want to tell you a quick story. They're an entrepreneur. This, they're an know, entrepreneur this, inside. This is a really, really good story here. So yeah. my first book, Virtual Freedom, one guy bought 50 copies. He's mm. based in San Francisco. And every day for a month and a half or so, or whatever it was, he would go out and he would leave one copy in public somewhere. Oh, so cool. He, leave, he was leaving them at Starbucks. He was leaving them at co-working spots. He was leaving them everywhere, all over the Bay Area, all over the San Francisco area. And in the front cover, he wrote, you know, pick me up, I'm free, and then tweet me and let me know what you think of, the, of this book or something like that. I, words for that effect. And he put his Twitter address in there. And long story short, after, I don't know, four or five months or whatever it was that he, he, he'd sort of got rid of all the books, he got this random tweet from this guy who was like, dude, this was incredible. Like what you did for this author was incredible. I'd love to hire you and have you come and teach us like about customer outreach and viral marketing and all this bits and pieces. And he, he landed like a $100,000 contract uh for like an 18 month period on an ad hoc basis or something wow. just by giving away copies of the book for free so that's that's a killer story right there that's cool so so you heard it buy 20 copies and you will have a hundred thousand dollar contract yeah guaranteed by matt <laughs> <laughs> um i'm gonna put a disclaim disclaimer um offer not valid <laughs> anywhere necessarily but it might happen clearly it happened for this guy and that's, you know what, 
Uh, it almost goes without saying, but that's the power of doing like he wanted to help you, but he also wanted to help others. And I got, I got uh, another story. Wait, yeah. You got two more minutes. I got another yes. story. I have all the time. It's you that I'm worried about. These, okay, we'll wrap up after this. So, and you're going to like this because I know this has been very close to your heart recently. This book. Oh, gosh. Yeah. That's like okay. the original vert. Oh, my God. This is actually oh. a, um, this is a, I'm going to, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going back now. Yeah. What so year this, is that from? This is a, this is a 79 print, the oh, 20th printing. Great year. October that was 1979. Yeah. Okay. So hmm. I will say that, and you're not going to be able to read it, but there's an inscription here from this guy. Okay. That um, he gave this book to one of his friends. His friend's name is Chuck. His name, I can't, because he signed it, I can't quite read his, his signature. But the, the story behind this book, for me, is very, very, actually very, very close to my heart. Because when I was 15 years old, um, and I, I don't know how we went on this tangent here, but hey, there you go. Apparently, your audience likes tangents, so we're going to give them one. <laughs> but the reason, why, the reason why I wanted to pull it up is because of that inscription. I, this was not given to me. I bought this secondhand for like four pounds or something in the UK. Right. So, so it's, it's made it, it looks to me like it was originally in America, but it's made its way to the UK. And it says here, dear Chuck, as we go through life, we question how original we are. Dude, I'm always talking about the power of being original. You go to my blog, you'll find countless yeah. blog posts about it. Right. And it says, um, actually, we are the product of many people and events that share our lives. We become original when we take the best of all these and become the person we want to be, this book can help you. Uh, uh, this this book will help you will ma will help make you a better person, husband, and worker. Study it thoroughly, and I will see you at the top. Okay, happy birthday and happy every day. He signs it right. So wow. obviously, see you at the top. Zig Ziglar, absolute freaking classic. Um, probably probably one of the my top three books I've ever read, plain and simple. But the reason why this is so close to my heart is because when I was 15 years old and a little bit of a tear away in London, <laughs> I did something I shouldn't have done. And I went to the local library and I saw this audio cassette. And all I remember seeing on 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 the on the audio cassette was the the was the book that will give you a checkup from the neck up, and I'm 15 and I'm like, what's this checkup from the neck up? This sounds like it could be kind of interesting. So I wanted to get the audio book out of the library, but uh, there was a rule at the library that you couldn't do it until you were 16. You could just take out regular books, oh. but not audio books. So I stole it, quite frankly. Right? I <laughs> I grabbed the tape and I put it in my jacket and I walked out. Now fast forward a couple of hours later. Um, I'm in my bedroom and I've got the audio tape on my stereo system. I've always been a big fan of music, still am to this day. And so I've got a good stereo system, even at the age of 15, you, know, you, you save up all your money and everything to get a good thing with some good speakers. And my mom walks by my bedroom and the door's just slightly ajar and even she can hear Zig's voice, which is a very prominent voice. I mean, oh, it's yeah. hard not to know it when you hear it. So she's walking up and she can hear this, you're going to have anything in life you want. And she bursts in. She's like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> By the way, that was a good Zig Ziglar impersonation. Well, thank you so much. And well, dude, I've listened to him for hours For, and for hours a Brit, now. especially. I didn't know that was possible. <laughs> continue, continue. So, but here we go. So, so she gets it out to me. Where did you get this tape? Where did you get it? Well, you know, one of my friends lent it. No, none of your friends lent it. They might have lent you Michael Jackson's thriller, but not this, you know, blah, 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 blah. So she finally got it out of me that I had stolen it. So she frog marched me, pulling me by the ear, like any good Catholic mother would do in public like this, right? And um, walked me into the library and she said, this is Christopher Ducker. He has just stolen this audio cassette from this library, and you must punish him for it. And so, uh, <laughs> so that was my see you at the top oh, story. And that's how you became the library's janitor for the next three months. Actually, you know what I was doing for for one month after school. 
um, every day. I had to go there for an hour every day after school to put the index cards. You know, this is before computers. Yeah. You to put the in- I mean, it was a library. I was in an actual building full of books. Imagine yeah. that, right? The Dewey Decimal so, thing. You know, this whole thing with the, with the alphabetical order of, of the index cards, that's what I needed to do. Oh. So that was my punishment. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll never forget that story because it was, it was classic mum. She was like that. Um, but it was also a big learning experience for me. Like, you don't steal things because you'll be publicly humiliated by your Catholic mother. Um, uh, but, but also it was my introduction to Zig and his work. And I can tell you now, here I am in my mid-40s, um, I don't think I've, I've gone a month in my life since that day where I have not genuinely consumed something from Zig Ziglar, whether it be reading a book or listening to a cassette or watching a YouTube video. I never got the chance to meet him. I never mm-hmm. got the chance to see him live. I wish I had had that opportunity, but I never did. But it just goes to show you what one person can do and the impact that they can make when you follow their work and you actually take action on it. Um, and for me, you know, Zig was the youpreneur personified. He was the say, personal was brand entrepreneur personified yeah yeah he'd be an honorary he'd be an honorary youpreneur right now if he was still with us <laughs> you know um i think we can make that happen actually um let's <laughs> you know have you met tom i have not met him i've never I, met him yet no i know you're going to i know you're going to talk to them but let's get you in touch with tom i think i think tom tom would like to hear that story um <laughs> i'm sure and, he would i some, remember you know what actually i told that story to dan and joanne miller yeah as we had breakfast at their house a couple of years ago, and they were in fits of laughter. I don't think I've ever seen Dan Miller laugh like that. It was absolutely yeah. brilliant to see his that's, reaction. I'd love to tell it to Tom. I think that would be a lot of fun. That's one of his featured books. Uh, one of his three books that Dan has like displayed at all times to see with the top, you know, one of his three. Yeah. Let, let's, let's connect you to Tom. I think, I think he would love to hear that. I think it would be, I think we could do some cool stuff with the youpreneur stuff. Uh, just, you know, Cool. Uh, honorary youpreneur, make a big deal out of it and all that. But sure, uh, as we wrap up here, guys, I'd love to do that. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk after. I, I want to make that happen. Uh, youpreneur dot com forward slash book. I've spelled it before. Not going to spell it again. Youpreneur book or youpreneur dot com forward slash book. Youpreneur dot com forward slash book. Go get uh, go get a copy for yourself uh, if you can. Get multiple copies. Chris has got extra bonuses if you get multiple copies. And uh, if you get 20, again, I'll repeat what I said earlier, 20 copies and email the receipt to receipts at mattmcwilliams.com. Uh, you will get an hour with me. Just to put that into perspective, I never do hours. I do four hours and it's $10,000. So um, one hour, we'll do a, an affiliate program. We'll talk about whatever the heck you want to. I'll help you, you know, I don't know. I'll help you parent your children if you really want that. Um, we'll do whatever. So anyway, we'll talk for an hour and I'll help you out. But you got to get 20 copies to do that and then go give them to somebody. So that's the deal. Go get the book. Go get lots of them uh, early and often, all that fun stuff. And Chris, thanks, buddy. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. It was fun talking. Mm-hmm.